Alright, send this music off. Thanks, mate. Right, people. Hello. Welcome. Well, let me just find uh, an appropriate space, place to put my bike down. Welcome to the Crumple Channel. Hello. Nice to see you. How are you? Um, back on the Africa Twin. Back on some lanes. And I'm actually, as the title of the video suggests, I'm off to test the KTM 1090R Adventure. Um, people who watch the channel will know that uh, every now and again I get rather itchy fingers. They need scratching and I need something new. Um, and I'm feeling a little bit like that, but I do love this bike a lot. So I'm thinking that I'll keep it. But one thing that's just getting to me a little bit about the bike is uh, the lack of power. 95 brake horse, and it's it's not a problem 90% of the time really. I commute on this bike and it's fantastic. I go on trails on this bike and it's fantastic. And you don't need, of course, 150 brake horsepower. But on the roads, when you want to kind of give it some, it's just a little bit sluggish for me. So I just wanted to try the KTM. So the video is more about that. I'll try and do a bit of a back to back and talk about comparisons with the Africa Twin because it's very useful, of course. I've had this bike for nearly 18 months, so I know it. And uh, whilst I love the bike, it's got its faults. It definitely has. There's a few things that, uh, little niggles, little things that I'm not that keen on. But uh, anyway, I thought he'd bring you with me and um, we'll get on the Africa Twin, we'll have a little bit of a chat. I couldn't help myself, I'm on the way to try out the KTM and I was coming past this lane and I couldn't quite help myself and that's the great thing of course about these bikes. Um, just that thing you think, oh, do you know what? I quite fancy some mud. I quite fancy a bit of uh, whoa, 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 some potholes. I quite fancy getting the bike covered in shit. And uh, whoa, 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 whoa. it's been quite uh, wet the last few days if you live in the UK. So this is a little bit treacherous. Nothing this bike can't handle. They'll probably think I'm crazy though, turning up to the the dealer on uh, on the Africa Twin, um, covered in shit. And that includes me covered in shit as well. Um, so we're nearly at the KTM place. I've just had a bit of a blast and a bit of a tour and some fast day roads on this and it's just lacking a bit. And of course it can't quite do everything, can it? I mean, that you're asking a lot of a bike, aren't you, to be the perfect bike in every situation. But it is a bit vibey, it's a little bit kind of, you open it up and you kind of uh, count the seconds. Um, so that's why I'm looking at the 1090. First impressions, and uh, I think they're pretty useful first impressions. I don't know, maybe they're not, maybe you shouldn't listen to them, but I feel very much, the difference between this and the Africa Twin, I feel very on top of this bike, rather than the Africa Twin where you feel like you're very much sitting in it. And I feel like standing up on this bike, I would be stood up way above it. The other thing that's immediately noticeable is the, um, how light the throttle, well that turns in nice, how light the throttle and how light the clutch is. But I've just been talking about vibes on my bike. I'm feeling more and more vibes. You get them right, you're getting, well, what is this? Is it an L twin, V twin? Um, you can feel them right under the seat already. I'm only doing 30. Um, it's on TKC 80s, it comes with TKC 80s as standard and obviously it's got the kind of adventure pretensions. Uh, I've got a gear indicator, I do like the dash. Um, at the moment, ooh, just obviously um, getting used to it, uh, it feels a little bit uh, sterile. Um, but I think it's possibly because I've got a Remus can on mine and it makes a bit of a racket and you do feel a bit more of a hooligan. Uh, up front, it looks nice. I don't think this is up to much. Um, I prefer the Africa Twin Dash, I think. So this has got 125 brake horse. It's got adjustable suspension all around. It's got WP suspension, um, which is pretty cool. I think the Africa Twin does show... The suspension's good, don't get me wrong. But um, 
you reach its limit pretty easy and you can tell why it cost ten and a half grand first time round I think in certain places. I'm not saying they skimped on things but ooh, it's not got the same quality of component as this bike. This has got Brembo's, it's got white power suspension. Um, yeah, it's got a few more trinkets on it. But so far, I'm not feeling, yeah, it feels a little bit, it needs a can. It definitely needs a can. I rode the 1050 Adventure and bemoaned the lack of power there, 95 brake horse, and then bought an Africa Twin. Uh, go figure. God, it feels rough as arseholes. It really does. If you open it up, I'm getting a massive sort of clanging under my arse here, vibrations. And it's not really going very far. Yeah, the, the suspension, obviously it's adjustable, but it's pretty firm at the moment. Um, I mean, I, I quite like mine a bit soft. I'm going to try standing up, but I'm slightly concerned about it. Bloody hell. That is terrible for me. I mean, obviously I've got no bar risers like I have on the Africa Twin, but on the Africa Twin, I could tuck my knees into the tank really nicely and it's very natural. There's some sort of squatting on the bike and it feels, as I'm stood up here, it's getting a little bit more natural, but I feel, a l that bike feels a hell of a long way down. Uh, it doesn't feel as natural as the, um, oh god, that piece of suspension. So far, uh, it's not doing a lot for me, I'm afraid. Um, let's just try it in, uh, let's just try it in sport mode. Oh, all right, all right, I'm closing the throttle. Yeah, we're in sport mode now. Third gear. Oh, now that's better. That uh, throttle response is a bit more instantaneous. Where the fuck am I here? But nice bridge. Oh, hello. Bit of a lane there. I'm not going back with mud on it. Dent. If that's a byway. Looks byway-ish. Uh, third gear. Yeah, that's better. That's street mode. I don't know if it's a 100 grey course, but it was just strangling the bike. That's much nicer feel where that 125 brake horse is now but still I do feel the bike feels well I suppose it feels sportier than the Africa Twin um, the Africa Twin maybe uh, feels a little bit more kind of adventure potential I mean I've had that bike for a year and a half so you know I'm used to it but the thought of taking this off-road um, just just because I mean obviously some bar risers um, setting the suspension up, getting these rubber inserts off the pegs, they would make a massive difference, I think. Uh, but so far, I'm kind of pining for the Africa Twin, and uh, one of the things that's kind of bugging me about the Twin is the... I love that clutch. I so wish. That's another thing that I was talking about and skimping on. Uh, cable clutch on the Africa Twin, which easier to... Uh, easier to manage and all that sort of stuff but this is just this is just beautiful I'd love that for uh, commuting uh, because my it has stiffened up a bit as well I'll try and keep it lubed hello because I like a bit of lube I've got no idea where I am much prefer that it does feel more sporty you can feel like you get your elbows out here those hand guards look like they'd probably struggle I think but I mean that's the sort of thing I've changed on the uh, it hand, it's, uh, turns in really nice and I found that last time sorry if this is a little bit uh, kind of um, what's the word hotchpotch this review but I'm just kind of saying things as they come to me really rather than uh, trying to put it in any kind of order I'll stop it a bit and show you around the bike um, that is very vibey incredibly vibey right up the seat right through the bars hopefully the wind's not too bad but um, when you open this thing up it just yeah it's got the nice burst that a twin you'd want from a twin but it's you could feel every fucking nut and bolt in this engine while you're doing it through there through your ass through everywhere hello
So, uh, let's have a look. I'll leave it ticking over. It's got a very poor sound. The uh, Africa Twin standard exhaust has got a lovely throaty sound. And there she is. Yeah. Don't grab me, does it you? Doesn't quite grab me. Um, that exhaust is shocking. I mean, these are built for, you know, they're, they're made, aren't they, for off-road, and they're made for the same thing as the Africa Twin, and this is, this is the Africa Twin's direct competitor, really, in terms of price, in terms of spec. It's just got a little, a few more ponies. I'll keep using that word, ponies. All right, mate, there's the uh, Tiger XR. Um, it's got... It's got a nice urgency when you open it up. It does pull, and you can feel it like pulling like a proper twin. The um, Africa Twin, yeah, you can see it's a, it's a V-twin, isn't it? Yeah. The Africa Twin's a parallel twin, and it feels a little bit tame at times. But this, it's so vibey. I mean, you really feel it. I've had V-twins, I had the L-twin, I think, the Multistrada, and that was, that was pretty smooth for a twin. This, you get that gas. I mean, I'm a bit sensitive these days, but yeah. Looking round it, that looks, that's just, no. I like the orange cross bars, they look great. Um, it's got an area for your, for your knees. That seat's nice. The seat on the Africa Twin is piss poor. A uh, little bit of plastic round here, I'm not keen on. Stand in a puddle, because I'm so adventure. That's how adventure I am. Um, yeah, it's not grabbing me, people. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why a test ride is not a bad idea, because you start sort of how adventure am I? I'll stop doing it. I really will. I'll stop it. I'll stop it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you're watching this for the first time and you're hoping for a serious test, it is serious. It's very serious. I just couldn't help myself. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to the AT. The AT is a bike, when you look at it, you just go, ooh, this. You're a bit like, uh, uh, mm. Yeah, I don't like the headlights so much. Quite like the stacks look, but, yeah. I don't know how you adjust these things. I'm not very good, by the way. If you were hoping for some kind of uh, technical things, then I'm sorry, I'm shit at that, but I'm in a puddle again. Uh, yeah, let's get back on the bike. I'll shut up. I mean, you've got to be careful on test rides, and of course, if you've got this bike and you're enjoying it, you know, you'd be saying to me, look, you've only had it 10 minutes, you can't make a decision, and it's true. When I first test rode the Africa Twin, I was a bit like, no. So you, you, you've got to be careful, but it's quite a good indicator, I think, that if you've been on this, if you've been on a test ride for 10 minutes, you're already thinking about heading back. Now that's that's quite an indicator, I think, that this is not the bike for you. Again, oh my. indicator, where are you? Oh my god. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's it. All right. it. I'm a bit. No, no, there's plenty of. Got my feet firmly on the ground. Hello? You want to stop him, please. Just going ahead of you, I want to stop him. So. You want to stop him? Yeah, going ahead of you. Alright. Alright, oh, okay. What's he doing? Run? Speed. Yeah. Who? <laughs> Fif what was it? 52? 52? 53? I don't know. I don't. Think it was right, right. I like it then. I'm just trying it out. Test it. I'm not keen. Look at that, hey? He doesn't know that guy in front, I don't think. Let's chase him down and see what happens. Well, crap, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought that, would you? And I passed him and I didn't think an 09 Beamer. You're not thinking, oh, there's a copper. He's not, it's unmarked. And he's obviously seeing how fast he's going now. This is a 60. Surge. 
just over 60, but not, not much more. I think he's going to trail him. He's already got him. He said he was doing 78, so he's already got him at 78. So he can nick him already, and he's pulling him, I think. But he can't pull over there, mate. There's nowhere to pull over. But yeah, I got lucky there. He said I was doing over 50. <laughs> you can't pull over if you keep going, dickhead. That's it. You've been got, mate. You're done. The Merc driver. And I'm on my little KTM. Quite happy that I was going rather slowly. And one of the reasons why I was going slowly, by the way, is to talk. I wanted to talk to you lot. So you have saved my arse, people. Thank you very much. Because I thought, I can't talk to you with the wind blasting around us. So I thought, right. But uh, he, he pretty much said, you know, I, I've got this guy. I wasn't, uh, you know, I was already after him, so... So that's good news. Happy days. Thanks very much. Thanks, KT. I'm going to buy you now. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. But yeah, for owners of this bike, I'm sure it's a corker. I'm sure it's crack. It's had fantastic reviews. Um, but I think the AT is uh, is a hell of a bike, and uh, I'm glad it's kind of confirmed that for me. Really. There we go. See you later, Tiger. Good luck, mate. Be <laughs> mine. My time next time. Um, we're get, I'm taking it back. I'm sorry, people. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, because one of the things that when you do test rides on these bikes, a lot of the people that watch them are people that have got the bikes. And I, I do it as well, you know. You just troll YouTube looking for it. And some of you will be looking to buy this bike and, and you might not be six foot four and you might, you know, blah, blah, blah. Go and test it. Go and test ride it. This is not... This is not the truth, what I'm saying here. It's just my opinion as I'm sat on the bike. And this bike is not for me. Um... I bet the KTM riders out there watching this, and the KTM guy, I bet he loves me, turning up on my Africa Twin, kind of saying, I think the Africa Twin's a better bike, mate. I bet he loves me. Um, yeah, it's good to be back on this. I don't know. Yes, it's familiar and that makes a big difference but that bike was vibey man and uh, yeah I mean stood up on this bike it's just so natural you know and I've got I'm tall yeah and he said oh you were tall bloke and I think well the bike's got to be you know adaptable for whatever size but I mean this one yeah all right I've got risers on it but I've got a proper stance on this bike whereas that one I was sort of crouched over it it's just so it was very vibey, and I've been thinking that this bike's getting vibey. It could be the tyres, I don't know, it might be the chain. Might need a, a more of an oil, but... This is a much better looking bike as well, I think. Um, obviously it feels nice and a bit more of a hooligan when you've got a can on it and that, but... Yeah, I, I'd like that clutch. I certainly would like that clutch um, on the AT, but... <laughs> It's nice when, and it's happened to me before, it's nice when you do a test ride, you get back on your own bike, and it's not that it's like putting a you know, comfy pair of jeans on or trainers on or whatever, it's not, it's not just that. It's just that I think the bike is a better looking, maybe not better performing, you know, in terms of speed, but this, this engine's responsive enough. Um, but it's nice when you get back on and you're like, yeah, that's why I've got this. And looking down at this bike with this fantastic paint scheme, uh, in comparison to what you were faced with before, you know. So, you know, if you're thinking of trying both bikes out, you know, go and take them out, don't listen to me. Um, and if KTM or Honda are watching, of course, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell you how great a KTM is if you give me a free one. Um, to play with. But, um, yeah, take them both out and uh, see for yourself. I mean, it's tricky because you probably want to take these bikes off-road and it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult when you go for a test ride to think, I'll take it up some trails, you know, some people would. But it does say on the form that the first thousand pounds you're liable for, so I didn't quite fancy that. Um, yeah. 
So let's stop on the AT just like we did on the KTM and the same shot as sort of walking around the bike and uh, I'd, I, I don't care who you are. That is a better looking bike. Yes, it's got a bit of mud on it, which of course increases or makes it look a bit sexier, but come on. Even if you're a KTM 1090 adventure or aficionado owner, uh, you run the owner's club, you're the chief treasurer of the owner's club. You're looking at that thinking, yeah. And it's not quite standard, of course. In fact, the mirrors on the standard one are better looking than that. A uh, couple of changes, but look at it. Such a good looking bike. So, I think the Africa Twin has it in terms of look. Um, and I think the Africa Twin's got it, so I'm very pleased. Um, the Africa Twin, I don't really know what they're like, of course, off-road. The Africa Twin's a big bike, it's a heavy bike. Um, it's not the easiest bike to take off-road. Um, but I don't imagine the KTM is that easy either, to be honest, so... There we are. Anyway, that was my opinion. That's all it was, people. Take it or leave it. As I've said before with these things, um, it's not the truth. I'll pull over. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, being around today. And thanks for helping me not get nicked by that copper. And uh, I'll see you back on the AT soon, people. I'm not flicking the Vs. I'm saying peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Come on, Mr. AT, you're staying. Let's celebrate. Let's go home and have sex. Whoopee! I just wish you had a bit more BHP. Yeah. And a better clutch. Yeah. What next then? The Triumph?